the kingdom of Lysoria thrived. Fields, once barren, now burst with life. Laughter echoed through the streets. Queen Elira, slayer of the Necrothar, had ushered in an era of unprecedented peace. Her victory resonated through the land. Hope blossomed in every heart. Elira ruled with wisdom and grace. Her advisors, trusted companions from their harrowing battles, guided her. Sir Kalen, the stalwart knight, Archmage Sira, wise and powerful, and Rhys, the rogue with a heart of gold. Together, they rebuilt Lysoria from the ashes of war. But peace is a fragile thing. It can shatter as easily as glass, and in the shadows, a new threat stirred. An ancient evil, far older than the Necrothar, sensed the kingdom's newfound strength. A darkness began to spread across the land. Not the tangible darkness of the Necrothar, but something far more insidious. It started subtly. A farmer's field swallowed overnight, a hunter vanishing in the woods. Then, entire villages blinked out of existence. Fear gripped the kingdom. Whispers of a new terror spread like wildfire. The stories were fragmented, incomplete, but they all spoke of the same thing. A consuming darkness, a void that devoured all it touched. Queen Elyra, ever vigilant, felt a chill grip her heart. The stories echoed a primal fear, a deep-seated unease. This was no ordinary threat. This was something ancient, something terrible. She summoned her advisors. The time for peace was over. A new battle was about to begin. Necrothar, not to the void, not to any threat. The call to arms echoed across Lysoria. This time, it wasn't a call for soldiers, but for heroes. From across the kingdom they came, the remnants of Alira's war council, hardened by battles. Whispers spoke of a reclusive order of mages. Among them stood Rhys, his usual cocky grin replaced by a grim line. We stand with Lysoria, he rumbled. We stand with Alira. We journey to the Eclipse Sanctum. Section 5. Journey to the Eclipse Sanctum The Eclipse Sanctum, a place of ancient power, spoken of only in hushed whispers. It lay hidden within the shattered mountains, a treacherous landscape of jagged peaks and winding canyons. The journey was fraught with peril. The land itself seemed to resist their passage. Storms raged without warning, paths crumbled beneath their feet. The void's influence was growing twisting the very fabric of reality. Yet, they pressed onward. Kalen's blade cleaved through monstrous creatures warped by the void. Reese's arrows found their mark with uncanny precision, picking off enemies from the shadows. Sira's magic blazed, a beacon of defiance against the encroaching darkness. Through it all, Elyra remained a symbol of hope. Her courage, her unwavering belief in their cause, spurred them forward. They would reach the sanctum. They had to. The fate of Lysoria depended on it. Section 6. Trials of the Sanctum The Eclipse Sanctum was not a place of welcome. It was a fortress, designed to test the worth of those who dared to enter. Ancient guardians, animated statues of obsidian and gold, rose to bar their path. Deadly traps lay hidden at every turn. But Elyra and her companions were not easily deterred. They fought their way through the sanctum's defenses, their skills honed by years of battle. 
Kalen's swordsmanship was a blur of motion, each strike precise and deadly. Reese, a phantom in the shadows, disarmed traps with deft fingers and uncanny intuition. Sira's magic was instrumental. She deciphered ancient runes, disarmed magical barriers, and unleashed bolts of pure energy against their foes. The air crackled with power as she wove her spells, a testament to her mastery of the arcane arts. With each challenge overcome, they drew closer to their goal. The Shard of Creation, the only power capable of sealing the void, awaited them at the heart of the Sanctum. Section 7. The Harbinger's Arrival They reached the Sanctum's inner chamber, a vast hall of polished marble. At its center floated the Shard of Creation. It pulsed with a power that seemed to hum in their bones. The ground shook, the walls trembled. A figure materialized, wreathed in shadows. Veldros, the Harbinger. So the mortals dare to defy the void, Veldros boomed. Tendrils of darkness snaked out, pinning Kaelin and Reese. Syra struggled to maintain a protective barrier around Elyra. Elyra knew she had to reach the shard. Section 8. Battle at Silver Peak. Veldros, sensing Elyra's intentions, unleashed a wave of pure darkness. Sira cried out, her barrier shattering under the onslaught. Elyra was thrown back, the wind knocked from her lungs. It is over, Queen of Lysoria, Veldros boomed, his voice like thunder. Embrace oblivion! But Elyra would not yield. She scrambled to her feet, drawing strength from the memory of her fallen comrades, from the hope she saw in the eyes of her people. She would not let them down. Not now, not ever. She charged towards Veldros, her sword ablaze with a light that seemed to pierce the surrounding darkness. Veldros laughed, a sound that chilled her to the bone. You are but an insect before a storm queen. Their blades met in a clash of light and darkness, the very air crackling with energy. The battle raged, a whirlwind of steel and magic, echoing across the peaks of the shattered mountains. They fought on the precipice, the fate of Lysoria hanging in the balance. Section 9. The Queen's Sacrifice Elyra fought with the fury of a cornered animal, her every strike fueled by desperation and love for her kingdom. But Veldros was relentless, his powers seemingly endless. He toyed with her, batting her aside like a bothersome fly. She was tiring, her movements growing sluggish. Veldros pressed his advantage, his darkness closing in. Your light flickers, queen, he taunted. Soon, you will be no more. He raised his hand for the final blow, a vortex of darkness swirling around it. Elyra knew this was it. She couldn't defeat him. But maybe, just maybe, she could buy the world a chance. With a surge of adrenaline, she lunged, not towards Veldros, but towards the Shard of Creation. She slammed her sword into the dais, channeling all her remaining strength, all her love for Lysoria, into the blade. A blinding light erupted, engulfing the entire chamber. Veldros roared in pain and fury, his form dissolving under the onslaught of pure creation. The void shuddered, its tendrils retracting as if burned. Section 10. Legacy of Light When the light subsided, Elyra was gone. Only her sword remained, embedded in the dais, a silent testament to her sacrifice. The void was gone. The rift sealed. The world was safe. Kaelin and Reese, freed from their bonds, could only stare in stunned silence. Their queen, their friend, was gone. But her sacrifice had saved them all. News of Elyra's sacrifice spread like wildfire across Lysoria. Grief mingled with gratitude, sorrow with awe. She had given her life to save them, to protect the kingdom she loved so dearly. In the years that followed, a new age dawned on Lysoria. An age of peace, prosperity, and remembrance. Elyra's sacrifice became a legend, a tale whispered by mothers to their children, a reminder of the true meaning of courage and selflessness. The kingdom of Lysoria would never forget their queen. Her light, the light of her sacrifice, would forever illuminate their hearts, guiding them towards a brighter future.